Good to see you all. Thanks for coming to see us. How is it from America? And to be from Italy, where are they? Are they here? Oh. Um, anyway, cheers. Great to see you all. Maybe you can start. Oh, good. <laughs> Excellent. Everyone's here. Thank you very much. Um, well, look, thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being, being with us all today today. It's been great to see you again. Um, so how's the last 12 months been? It's been pretty cool, hasn't it? Pretty easy. No stress-free. I think mean, last year when we were here we had our Maury, so we were picking up rhubarb plants while we were here and going back with all the plants around our garden, but obviously we got a bit bored with that. And um, yeah, we've got a boat which needs to move, haven't we? So yeah, we've been uh, we to the Langochlan Canal, which was fab and was quiet and lots of other people that we knew there, lots of friends. And um, we're now gradually, we've gone north, so we've come back down south again. Yeah, we're down at Stourport, I'm seven at the moment. So we've had quite a few miles in, uh, since we left playing off just after Christmas, yeah. wasn't it? But you know, this is what happens, we change our minds about things. You know, we thought we were on the mooring, we thought we were happy, we thought garden was it. But four months later it wasn't, so... <laughs> Well, that's the beauty of this life, isn't it? it you is. can do what you want to do. And as long as you're with me, it's okay. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is real life. <laughs> <laughs> Always a charm. <laughs> And, and is it, and you've been up the, I always give myself words I can't pronounce, the Frank Gosling Canal. And is it as beautiful as everyone says it is? Oh, man alive, it's fantastic. First time I ever went on the Frank Gosling Canal was when I was 10, with my mum and dad. We took the boat across the Ponte Casilti aqueduct. And I remember it, and I get really emotional about it, like I know. <laughs> and, um, but seeing it again, no, <clears throat> years later, it's just absolutely stunning still, you know. The fact that this, this Ponte Casilti aqueduct still stands for 200 years is just incredible. And it's testament to British Waterways Board and Canal River Trust as he's now. But it's still standing there and it's, you know, it, it is part of the, um, what's it called, the World Heritage, well, yeah, World Heritage yeah. Site, isn't and it? And it takes so much money to sustain it, doesn't it, and keep it going. And yeah. uh, I think they've got, um, a fund going at the moment just to keep it repaired and keep it up and running so you know we just need to all keep on don't we keep giving what we can to keep it going yeah. and open for everybody it's beautiful but yeah i'm just glad you pronounced it rather than me <laughs> uh, and, and, and have you got any top tips for anyone who's looking to go there is there anything any, any sort of just do it just go and just go in the winter and go in the winter yeah, it's quiet yeah it's yeah. beautiful Summer can get really, really busy. I guess it's more beautiful in the summer. You know, you can get into you know, down to the rivers a little bit and walk. But it gets so busy with boats, isn't it? The mooring can be difficult. We've done it both and loved the winter up there. We had Christmas in, uh, in the, well, not in the base of we were at outside, were we? Yeah. Mm. And it's such a lovely place to be for Christmas. Beautiful, yeah. really beautiful. Yeah, it's got everything. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And uh, would it be safe to say that that's one of your favourite canals, or if not the famous, but the most favourite, sorry? It's one of our favourites, but our favourite canal, we always say this, don't we? It's, it's the canal we're actually on, yeah. isn't it? It's, yeah. uh, but now we're on the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. That is absolutely stunning. We did it six years ago, and you forget, you know, you do, but we've gone down it this last month or so, yeah. and it's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the, the villages and the towns all around the canal, scenery, when you think last year we were in Yorkshire, and it was all hills of sheep, completely different now, but the scenery is just as beautiful, isn't it? Just everywhere you go. We've just come by the edge of all Manhattan, and you think that you're on the edge of a big city and it's not good, but it's beautiful. The canal is still beautiful wherever you are, isn't it? Usually. So, yeah. Not even hanging. Yeah, but the, 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 around Kiva, it's absolutely stunning, isn't it? Like the sandstone cliffs that come right onto the edge of the canal, and at one point, you're 
oh, just a narrow boat and a half widen, isn't it, to get through? It's just amazing, incredible, brilliant. And what, what plans for this year, the rest of this year? Any sort of big journeys? Any the plans today or yesterday <laughs> or tomorrow or just uh, the plans today are to finish this and go to the bar. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, yes, a week ago we were planning to go over towards Cambridgeshire on the levels. Um, but we understand that that's silted up and it's not easy to travel at the moment. So we changed our mind and we were heading to Utel because I lose track of where we're going. At the moment we're at Starport on 7. We want to go to Birmingham uh, because we love it and it's my own tech. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to visit some family. Then we're going to go hopefully down to Stratford on Avon. Uh, there's a lot repaired, being repaired at the moment apparently, which is going to take some while, but we'll wait. On the River Avon, on the River Seven, down to Gloucester, back up to Worcester, and then who knows from there. I don't think that will I think it'll change. Yeah, it'll change that, sure. yeah, I'm sure it'll change, but that's it, yeah. Well, that's one yeah. of the advantages of doing what you do, isn't it? You can kind of just yeah. change your plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the same to somebody earlier on today. The times we've got to a junction at Cal and tossed a coin and, uh, you know, gone wherever. But we never to. argue, do we? That is true, you isn't do. it? We don't. <laughs> <laughs> we, ne- we never have a disagreement about no, it today, do we? Say. Because everywhere, yeah. as you said, is everywhere is beautiful. So the only thing that we did want to do is go down to the Basingstoke Canal, but you can only do that um, some of them, so that'll wait till... Is that right? No, you can do it all year round, but you're only allowed there for 30 days, aren't yeah. you? So we'll leave that till the summertime next year. Yeah. yeah. Heading right down south, yes. yeah, yeah. Get, get, get yeah. And uh, for those of you who know, we put out um, some social media posts about some questions, and people have written in and uh, asked some questions. So these might be slightly random, uh, but they're written down. Um, here we go. What's the next one? Did, uh, when you moved on to a narrow boat, did your hobbies change? Actually, we have more time to do hobbies, mm. haven't we? We've because uh, we've stopped working so much. Um, so I'm doing a lot more art than I ever have done and you're weaving your scarves which are available on floating art boat. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you bought me the weaving loom after we decided to buy a boat so I wasn't a weaver at all and you bought the loom because it folds up but I was a beekeeper before I couldn't bring the bees with me could I? So That's something had to change. <laughs> So, and you, you've always been interested in art, but you yeah. won't be really doing very much. No, you? yeah, so I've got right back into that. And the, lack, the only thing we have for me and my art, because I like to chuck paint around, I don't like to sit there. <laughs> but, you know, and there's not much room for doing that. As you'll see, if you went on our boat, there's paint splashes uh, here and there everywhere. <laughs> yes. Or Jackson Pollock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. And, uh, uh, here's one. What are your top tips for starting a garden whilst living on a narrowboat? Oh, gosh. The first year I tried to grow everything. I had courgette plants and spinach and cauliflowers and everything. But you've got two problems. Number one is the space, or three, the space. If it gets too tall on the roof, Rich moans like mad because he can't see where he's going. So you can't. I have seen boats that are covered, the roofs are covered, but when you're cruising, you can't see the bridges, so you've got to keep it low. And so I learned quickly, pretty quickly, you can't do that. And watering, of course, is the problem. If you're eating the vegetables, then you can't really, or we don't like to use canal water. So it's all right for the flowers, but we haven't got water. So we've really toned it down now. And just, I would just say, keep it simple, grow what you like. If you want to grow food, salad stuff is a must. Fantastic, yeah. And tomatoes. But just grow what you want to grow, but keep it simple because it could become quite difficult. And, and was it? Well, I know you had your you were kind of on a permanent boring a while back when you had your own garden. Was it a real bind leaving all that? Leaving all yeah, that? I did cry. Didn't I? <laughs> but um, everything's a compromise, isn't it? Everything in life to me is a compromise, and, and we couldn't have a perfect garden, a lovely garden, and cruise. It just couldn't happen. Really, so. We really, really miss gardening, don't we? Yeah. We, we miss you know, putting spuds in the ground, watching them grow. But it, as Fran says, it's a compromise. What we, what would we rather be doing? Cruising our uh, 60 foot steel tube in a ditch or growing vegetables <laughs> in the garden? And it's the so. same with you and your art. That's a compromise. You have to yeah. start doing different kinds of art. Other artists will know it's different. It's difficult. Everything is difficult. 
But um, it's worth it. It's worth you know, worth out with it. Yeah. And again, uh, so yeah, so and then. What advice would you give to someone looking to build their own boat? That's a good one. Don't. Have <laughs> <laughs> somebody yeah, build it for you. Yeah. <laughs> that was a nice easy one. And uh, are there any changes that you would put to Laura Maisie now, or is she is she the perfect maybe, or is it a couple of tweaks? We're, we're quite easy going, aren't we, when it comes to we we weren't picky about what we wanted on board. We liked the shape and the interiors of Elton Moss's boats, didn't we? And the build quality was great. So we were more or less kind of happy to go along with their existing plans. But we tweaked a few things, didn't we? We changed the bathroom around a little bit. But um, yeah, we're more than happy. We'd like a bit more storage space because you've been on board this boat now for three years. We've been cruising the canal system for six years. So you accumulate stuff, <laughs> don't you? And we, every now and again, we're taking bags down to the charity shop, aren't yeah. we? Because we can't hold it. And, and Rich goes a bit green every time we go past a boat that's got a big world deck. Oh man, I love my boat. boat <laughs> with massive long tub deck, you know. Just... We did actually have a conversation with our one most recently about the possibility of stretching our world deck, but it appeared that it's a really difficult thing to do. You're popping, so, sorry. Um, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a really difficult thing to do to um, stretch your whole deck, yeah. get any part of the boat, I think, so no, it's not worth it. We might not be our forever home, this boat, we might in the end, you know, decide that we'd like a wife beam with more like a river or something, no, we don't plan ahead, you know, one, it might be tomorrow we see the perfect wide beam boat or the perfect narrow boat, you know, we just go with it, wouldn't we? But we've got no plans to change anything on this boat at the moment. I'm quite glad to hear it. We did, we did a filming project on it a couple of years ago now, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And yeah, just spending that much time, you could see how much you guys loved it. So, yeah, yeah so good, the good news is you're not sort of planning on changing it. Um, another question uh, Do you wish you could ever be less recognisable so you could walk around shows <laughs> and go to the bar? No! <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. It, 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 it's great. We, we, uh, well, we're all talked out, aren't we, to be honest? Today's been fantastic. We've met so many people. It's been wonderful. And we just thought we'd nip to the bar to get a drink, didn't we? And we got stopped about three times on the way. That's the nature of the beast, you know. We made it what it is and we love it. And if we haven't had time to talk to you properly, I'm really sorry, but we are still here tomorrow as well. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, come and find us. That's the I mean, it is. It's quite, yeah, it, when, you're, when you're dying for a drink, just. But it's nice that everybody, it's nice that everybody's asking you good questions. Yeah. yeah. Interesting, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, more practical question. This one. How do you cope with muddy towpaths and oh. dogs keeping your boat clean inside? This is a Probably a question that you want to answer this. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you, I think, you're the one that does it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the one that does it. I think you have to be quite relaxed about it. If you want to be completely house proud and have a pristine, sparkly boat, it is difficult. And you're going to get stressed, the dogs are going to be unhappy. So we have a big stack of old towels. And if the dogs come in muddy, they just literally get wiped down. We've got wooden floor, no carpet in the boat. So it dries, you vacuum, wipe the floor, and it's done. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, the one that gets muddiest is Archie. And Archie loves to swim. So, yeah, he often gets encouraged to go for a swim before he gets back on. I think the key thing you yeah. said there was to be relaxed about it, yeah. isn't it? You can't yeah. not get dogs muddy on a canal no. topic. No, no. And, and it is, it's, it, no, I mean, one of the things we know so many years of being here is how many people do have dogs on board. And they're, they're yeah. It seems to be that the two things go together quite well. Yeah, yeah. you've got to have a dog, you've got to have a vlogging camera. <laughs> that's all you need now. <laughs> um, right, that's a good one. We got lots of that. Um, question from Zara: uh, Do you find access to healthcare a concern or problem, or is it your, you sorted that out? Well, you've got a pretty sorted out. We're just healthy. Yeah, uh, touch wood. We, we've only needed. Uh, I've only, only needed a GP once, maybe twice. Yeah. You've needed a GP once. Yeah. I've had an ambulance called out to me three times, but um, we've had another problem, have we? No. It's been fine. But no. we found that if we needed to, to register with a general practice, they can't refuse you. You have they have to register you. 
So if you get uh, a receptionist that doesn't want you to register, you have to be persistent. But we haven't touched wood had any trouble. We've had no, yeah. no, no trouble. Very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> touch wood, please. <laughs> Um, okay, moving on. Uh, have you ever had to stay somewhere longer than two weeks, and how did you manage it? I don't think we have, have we? We've never had to ask for an extension of a stay. I think recently we both had a bad bout of colds and coughs, and we had to overstay our more. We said, but, but can I have a room trust? I really understand you. You've only got to give them a call and tell them you've got a problem, but usually. Two weeks. We don't want to. We don't to want to stay yeah. anywhere more than two weeks. Yeah. Not a week, and we're ready to go on. You know. Yeah. 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 Well, that's always good because it, yeah, yeah, I suppose you, the journey continues. Yeah. Journey. You have to get it. Well, um, oh God, what's the question now? Uh, a question for Frank. When are you going to produce your cookbook? <laughs> <laughs> Where did all this come from? I'm not a cook. <laughs> um, well, I certainly aren't. <laughs> no, Rich doesn't doesn't like cooking at all, do you? No. Um, I don't know, probably never, because I'm not, I don't consider myself a cook. My cooking, my pleasure in cooking comes from making a meal out of what ingredients we've got. And when you're on a boat, that's a big thing. We can't look at a lovely recipe that calls for kimchi <laughs> and something else, and you, you, you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. So my pleasure is seeing what's in the cup and making a meal out of it. Uh, most of those recipes. Why did she make a miniature? <laughs> <laughs> you be careful. Um, most of those recipes are simple, quick to cook, and really suitable for narrow boat living or camper van living. So we do put them on the website, and I need to put more on there. Um, but yeah, a cookbook, I don't know, I get asked a lot, but I'm not Fanny Craddock. Nobody probably knows who she is, do they? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I think you know who Fanny Craddock yeah. is. Yeah. 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 That's our demographic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 More, more people than I thought, okay. Do, do the washing up, Johnny. Do, uh, do. <laughs> do the washing up, Johnny. We are considering a book. Um, we were, we were invited last year to write a book um, about canal life and etc. And on the face of it, it was going to be a great idea. We wanted a 350 page book with pictures etc. But the one thing that stopped us was one, it was going to be bloody hard work. And two, um, they wanted us to cover items, uh, subjects such as hiring a narrow boat and the holiday and on the other back. Well, we've never done that, so we can't write about it. And we'd have to research it, which I said to the editor at the time that would be infinitely tedious for us. So yeah. we decided not to do that. But we, we are toying with the idea now of writing our own book. Fran does poetry and haikus. I do a bit of art. You've been writing a journal every day of our travel since we started six years ago. Every day that we moved. So yeah. we thought yeah. about a mixture of all three things. So, is that a good idea? Yeah. 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 So maybe we can go ahead and do that. But we had to pick up, we had to pick up, didn't we, with the haikus? Because yeah, uh, it would be a remarkable tablet that you can write on. Uh, last At the end of last year, I wrote every haiku down on the tablet, but I'm not a technical person. And a week ago, I did it the whole lot. So all the haikus have gone. <laughs> And I've got to start one over again, but yeah, we'll see. We're, we're thinking about it. <laughs> Come here. Dogs, dogs want any input? Haven't got a microphone. Archie. So. Um, do you, do you, an interesting one. Do you ever see yourselves living back on land in the future, or is? Oh, it's a, it's a. We do, don't we? Uh, torment ourselves with looking at cottages on land and uh, little plots of land, but. Yeah. At the moment, I don't think so. We're more than happy. I mean, at the end of the day, we've got a, a lovely boat. And at the end, it is a floaty flat. You know, if we went out and land and bought a flat, we've got people living next to us who we might not like. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and we can move our home to wherever we want, more or less, wherever we want it to be, don't we? We, we add up all the pros and cons. In fact, we wrote almost as like a spreadsheet recently. We scored all the points of staying on a boat and moving back to land and the advantages and disadvantages of both. And it came out far in favour of staying on the boat. Yeah. Um, 
We're just not interested in going back to that that stationary land in bricks and mortar. No. And unfortunately, it's not easy in this country, is it, to buy a little bit of land and build yourself a wood cabin? Because yeah, that would be the dip that would, that would possibly tip us over the edge. But um, thanks, Jess. Yeah, lovely. Um, no, we just while well, we're still enjoying cruising, we'll still enjoy cruising, but we won't say never. It's always, you know, yeah, it's a very that's, long, yeah. yeah, it's the way, isn't it? Yeah. And cost of living on board, I mean, do you find it cheaper than it was or more expensive or how do you uh, find the cost of living on board? I don't care what anybody says, it's far cheaper living on a boat than it is living on land. We calculated it out, didn't we, that long ago. We're very frugal, aren't we? We don't run the engine day. So we've run our engine, this boat we've got now is a three years old last month. And we've run our engine for a thousand hours. That equates to less than one hour a day. We hardly ever, ever run the engine to produce power, do we? If we want power, we'll move the boat. Um, so, um, I've lost the train of thought now, Francis. But we, you know, we still forage for wood for the fire. Yeah. When the fires are like we're cooking on the fire, we're so that we're saving grass. It's almost become you can become a little bit yeah, obsessed so. with saving wood, uh, with saving money on your fuel. But for us, we've kept it down really cheaply. Yeah. That's, so this frugal way of living I was on about. We calculated that three. This was about two years ago when we did this calculation. We got everything down the nitty gritty. Everything we spend. Uh, to do with the boat, not necessarily with food or clothing, etc. And it works out, this is two years ago, so things have changed. It works out at £10 a day to live on a boat. That's not, that's once you've bought your boat, you know, so you've got to spend that money first on yeah. to buy a boat. But it's £10, yes. and I don't think we're that far off that day. No, I don't think we are, but it, you know, it's almost, you get asked this a lot, how much does it cost to live on a boat? It's almost an impossible question. Yeah, it's Because it's just so dependent on your lifestyle and what yeah. you want to be doing and how you live. Yeah, I suppose if you, you want know, more up outside the pub every night. Yeah, well, that, that would yeah. be yeah, it's a serious point, to be honest. If you like to you know, eat in the pub every night, then it's going to quadruple at least, isn't it? And if you're not good with cold mornings, you've got the central heating running every five minutes and you know, stuff like that. But we just don't. Uh, we've got slippers and socks. Well, that kind of answers the question how do you heat your boat? Got that on, man. With you and what, the way you flow with the vlogging and all that sort of stuff, how easy is, um, how good is the mobile reception, Wi-Fi, all that sort of thing? How do you, how do you operate as vloggers yeah. on a boat in sometimes places where there is limited or no signal? I suppose? This day and age, we're quite slaves to the internet, aren't we? You know, and uh, I get quite stressy, don't I? If we've, if we've moored up and we're you get the laptops out and there's no signal. <laughs> and we wouldn't be the first time we unmoored and moved move the boat down the road. But it is important to have an internet. And we, we don't have anything fancy other than a MiFi dongle dangling in the window and a pair and a, a clip that came with a set of underpants from the Tesco. <laughs> you know, that's what we use. And 90% of the time it's fine. Yeah. Uploading videos does take a lot of the data, doesn't it? Yeah. But uh, and I did a, a real-time video last week and it took 24 hours for it to upload to YouTube. So you have to be quite zen about it, but uh, you will or you will not have internet signal. I hope that's being recorded that you just said that. I am very zen about it. We've got that on camera, There is an F in zen. <laughs> Um, I will do one more of these and then we'll open up. If there's anyone out there who's got a question, then please do stop thinking about which one you want to ask. I think, have we got someone with a microphone out in the back there? Or is it just me running around? It's me it looks running like around. Looks like you, mate. Yep, that would be the first time. Um, <laughs> and obviously, there's the two of you living on board with the dogs and all that sort of thing. Is it, it, there must have been times, obviously, in the spiritual, but is there a time when you kind of think that you, you need to kind of. Sitting either in the boat or anything like that, or is it just? No, it's, it's, first thing you have to know and realise is if you're a couple and you want to live on a narrow boat, you really got to love each other because there's no way you will survive as a couple. You need your own space, and if you realise you need your own space, then that's not an issue, is it? You know, we, we both need our own space. And oh, when you're cruising, you're driving about, I'll sometimes go and sit at the front of the boat. 
And it's important that you do because sitting at the front of the boat is just so oh, different to yeah. being at the back, isn't it? It's a yeah. beautiful thing. Yeah. And you you enjoy your yoga and your well, meditation. Don't that's you? another so story, you isn't it? Yoga on the narrowboat yeah, is another story. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I look after the bedroom, do meditation, and you, you put your earphones on and listen to music. So. Mm. Um, we've never yet really got to screaming point where we've got to get away from each other, have we? <laughs> have well, we? Well, that's first. <laughs> yeah. Rich, just not. Just not. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone got any questions out there? Put your hand up. Anyone? Over there. Over there. That's good. I'll be with you in two seconds. Hi, Colin Rich. Hi. Hi. We're just about to buy a book and we read a lot about CRT funding and how are things looking very dubious from the maintenance canals. You're, you've been on them for six years. Are you starting to notice any degradation or are you concerned about what's going to happen over the next three, four, five years as money it appears is going to run dry? Really concerned, to be honest. Uh, we have, I can't say we've noticed a massive deterioration in the canal system, but we are starting to see it creak or groan a bit. I think we, we're paying what 120 pounds a month for our boats as a license fee, and that's pretty cheap. And that is that is not even giving the canal. If I'm right, the Canal of River Trust 11 percent of their required funding, isn't it? Mm, the boaters' right. license fee. So it's important that we support the Canal of River Trust, whatever you think of them. And we've all got you know our own uh, impressions of them. But they're at the at the moment they're the only ones that are running the show, and we have to go along with it. But it is it is a concern, and if I'm getting political now, if you've got a bloody myopic government like we've got that's taken that funding away from something that is so pleasurable, not just to voters but for thousands of people up and down the country, yeah. what can I say? You know, but there's there's so many people that are enjoying the canals. There's so many more boaters coming on. I can't see it collapsing. I just don't see that it's going to be allowed to, that it can happen. There's too many businesses that are revolving around the canals. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've, we've said that we wouldn't mind doing some fundraising for Canal River Trust because you don't actually see much fundraising going on. And we've that. actually thought about setting up ourselves whenever we're somewhere that's a popular venue to get walkers and get cyclists to give a little bit as well towards it. I don't know if that's dropping the ocean or not. See, we, we, I do worry about Canal River Trust's ability to, to market the, the system. It's so easy with technology these days to have a little um, QR code on a lock gate or on a bridge with an explanation saying, do you know how much it costs to run this canal? We run this by them time mm. and time again. But uh, and I don't think the people who run on the canals and walk the canals and cycle the canals realise just who runs it and, and, and the funding that is no longer going to be available for it. So I think they're just really, th oh, it's there, it's run by the government, you know, blah, blah, but I don't, uh, I do think uh, we're, it is worrying, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it because a couple of canals might close down in 10 years. I don't, I don't I can't see them closing the canals into London now. Yeah, some of the smaller some ones reason. might go, that's the way we feel it, some of the smaller dead end canals. You know, we'll try and do all those while we can because they might go in the next few years. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. All the main room I know, where did you get that? I'm sorry, I can't disclose this. I didn't uh, weave it. <laughs> <laughs> That's science, please. And uh, since I bought it, it's fifteen percent off, folks. So, uh, <laughs> That's a popular lot. But some line of the day, you've got your power bank. Um, your honest opinion on that? Is it an eighteen hundred watt? We don't, have, we don't have a power bank. Do you not have a plug-in power bank on your no, no, no. We have been offered them right. before, but we've refused because we've never, um, that I can think of, we've never vlogged anything that's been given to us like that. Right, okay. Um, and we don't need one. We just feel that we don't need one. I'm sure that we'd use it if we had it from yeah. time to time. But as you say, our power needs are so small. Our solar does it all for us. So what sort of solar setup have you got? There's these two black things on the roof. And there's a flicker switch inside. Oh, they're too but I think they're 240 
So you have to be not very good. Go steal and lost turn and ask them. I don't know what you've got on board. I know you've got a three kilowatt inverter. Yeah. Right. Sorry. No, we just, that just goes over my head. Power electricity. I've got not the slightest interest in it. So we will have to go for the sound battery for three years. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's another testament to our frugality. Yeah. Um, we don't mind, you know, if we have to, if we if we run out of power in the middle of winter, we'll just read a book or something. You know. Yeah, go back to that shirt. I thought that, that was when you painted it. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Any more questions? A friend, Rich, um, welcome. Thank you. Um, would there be anywhere else outside of the UK canal system you might like to go down to the line or something like that? This is an um, uh, extension on watery ways. Mm-hmm. You've, you've travelled on French canals a little bit, haven't you? Yeah, I have done. Um, yeah, I mean, possibly. Once we've done this and um, we're, you know, we need to do something different. But we'd have to, obviously, there's no way that we're going across. The channel, I know that it's had narrow boats had, mm. but we'd have to get the boat taken out and move over. And the problem is now that you can only stay for three months at a time, so it'd be a big expense to take the boat over mm. when you can only stay for three months. Mm. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. Did talk about uh, Ireland, but we got fed yeah. up with these canals, we could get the boat shipped out to Ireland, but we can yeah. still live in Ireland, couldn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. that might be an interest. Yeah. Fun, it yeah, retired years ago. That's it. Okay, thanks very much. Richard, you are. You sell both of those three, web, three websites. Any plans to do um, canal site trading? Have you thought about that? Yeah, that's something we've never done um, at the moment because we've never had to, have we? But um, we were talking about it actually last night, that, uh, or yesterday. But, that went on the train actually, wasn't it? But we might just um, do some pop, pop-up shops, you yeah. know, when, we, when we're like in places like Stratford and Avon where there's heaps of people walking past the boat and make use of that traffic, yeah. I think we should, you know, just start making smaller things for over this and... Uh, that means yeah. working, though, doesn't it? You love it, you love it. <laughs> you can't call it a creating artwork work. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's the sustained stuff around it. Just, we love creating what we make and then uploading it onto the website. Yeah. Oh, it, it, takes us a day. it takes me a day if I wear skulls to then get them on the website and hate it. I absolutely <laughs> hate all that stuff. So I'd much rather make and just sell face to face. But yeah, we'll see. Well, I think I later think this summer we'll do a couple and see how it goes. We'll announce it on Facebook, yeah. you know, the couple of days before where we'll be. What kind of power usage as well? You're just selling it out the long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Anything? Any other questions from around the room? Well, I know that. How do you come up with the pressure to create content for Do you have like no camera days? And- yeah, I used to get really uh, wound up by trying to get a video out every week. Because we both do a bit of film. I do most of the filming. Fran does a little bit, don't you? you know, it's you're, rubbish. You're, it's my film. It's rubbish. It's lovely. You can always see my filming because it goes yeah. like that. It's rubbish. rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> but um, filming is really enjoyable. The editing isn't so enjoyable anymore because it takes such a long time. You know, a 20 minute video will take eight hours of editing. And then you've got to upload it, and then you've got to also go through all the hoops that Google want you to go through before you can put the video out there. But I don't feel any pressure anymore because I, we don't put a video up anymore unless we've got something to say. And we can't be doing we're putting one up every Thursday at four o'clock because that's not us, is it? No. Yeah. And we've got other things to do. We enjoy doing the videos. We enjoy seeing everybody enjoying the videos and the comments that come through. And I enjoy the creative process of editing and seeing the finished product and putting the music in is something I really like doing. But uh, no, we don't put ourselves under any pressure anymore to get a, you know, a regular video. We might we might skip a few weeks, we might do one one a week for the next three weeks, but um, 
And it's it just, I mean, you do get times when you're just not in the mood to do it, no. and there's just no point. No. It's like your health and our happiness is more important than getting a video out, which is going to earn us a few pennies. You know, it's more <laughs> important to enjoy life. I got up the other morning, didn't I? I said, oh, do you know what? I've got to get a video coming down the Shropshire Union. And I sat at the computer <coughs> looking around the internet. And then next thing you know, it's one o'clock and I just shut the lead down and say, right, what are we doing there? <laughs> God, just do you can always, do it, you you can always tell when he doesn't want to do the video because he says, I'm going to just find some music for this video. And four hours later, he's still listening to music because yeah. <laughs> you love doing it. Curled up in a corner, sorry. <laughs> no, no question, thank you. Don't stop doing them because obviously everyone seems to enjoy them. But yeah, I think they'll be more periodical. Definitely than... won't stop doing videos, never. Um, it, we started soon. From day one, more or less, didn't it? Was six years ago, we started doing the videos, and uh, yeah, and at the end of the day, I have to be, I have to be honest, it earns us a living. Uh, you know, Google doesn't pay a huge amount for us to do it. We have patrons that help us, you know, along the way because that's what they want to do. We don't go asking for money or anything, but it's, it's there. But the money, the money that Google gives us, puts diesel in the tank, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, it just allows us to yeah. keep keep going. And without that, we'd have to get work. We'd have to get work yeah. elsewhere. We'd You'd have to get a job. Yeah, would I? That was a bit awkward, quickly. Uh, <laughs> any other questions? Uh, one on the back, the one there. <clears throat> oh, Hello there. Hello. Hello. Um, when you watch Alan and Deck on the telly, Hans always on the left. As you say, when you do your videos, do you have one on the left and one on the right? I do I don't know. I think you do swap it around, don't you? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm, I'm more or less at the front of the camera all the time, aren't I? So. Yeah, and it depends on the uh, where the microphone is, because I tend to shout as well. Yeah. So I think when we're just... talking on the back of the boat when we're cruising, you're invariably driving, aren't you? Because I'm backwards and forwards messing around with the camera. But uh, no, I haven't even thought about that. <laughs> no, I'll think about it. <laughs> and who's out to the deck anyway? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you were really brave, I think, talking about your mental health on your video. Do you think it's even better for your mental health reach living on a boat compared to living online? Uh, no. Frankly. I think in the depths of winter, that's when I'm really at my lows. And um, I'll wait for him to finish. Oh, okay. um, I don't like talking about it, to be honest, but I was, when I put that video out, I was on such a down, such a low, wasn't I? It been the longest I'd ever been depressed for a long, long time. And we talked about it and I said, should I put a video up and talk to people about it? Because I haven't put a normal travel log video up. And I guess people were, were asking us, weren't they, when you put a video So I thought, no, I will do it. And I made the video, which is only five minutes long. And it sat on the computer for two or three days before I put it up. And the one thing most people have asked today, being here, is about that video. Yeah. But it did, I think it did help you because it took the pressure off of having to make another video, which was contributing to your yeah, state of mind, wasn't was, it? Yeah. So once that was out there and everybody knew just there's no videos for a bit, you were free to... But it resonated it. with so many people because the comments just... We had more comments on that than anything for so long and they're still coming through, aren't they? Yeah. And uh, I can't answer them. You've been asking a lot of them because I just... I can't keep going through into that space. What it's brought to light is that how many people either know how you feel or they're a partner of somebody that gets like that. And it, it's almost everybody that has got a little hint of what it's like. Mm. Um, I don't think it's any worse living on a boat or any better living on a boat. I just think it's there. And it will always will be there for whatever you know, reason. Or not. I guess I'll, live, I'll just live with it. But I've had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's a very positive way to finish it. So, very, thank you very much, Richard.